So here we are on the internet looking at a live published client proofing gallery. So as you'd expect, we can blow images up and peruse them in slideshow mode. And we can start making selections. So let me just choose a few images. And you can see that as I do so, the counter is ticking to show that I have images selected. Four images, five images, six images. So I've made some selections and let's say that's all I want to do. So I'm going to come down to the contact form and fill this in with my name. And just so we can see it happen, let's go ahead and hit send. And you can see that I've been warned can't be empty. So I need to fill in these fields. So I don't want to share my email address. So I'm going to type in not public. And I'm going to type in my also not public for my phone number. And now I'm going to hit send again. And you can see I get another warning, must be a valid email address. So you can put in not public for a telephone number, but you must enter an email address into the email field. So I'm going to go ahead and put in an actual email address. For comments, I'm just going to write, this is a test. And for website, I could leave this blank if I wanted to, but I actually have a website. I'm going to put in the address for the turning gate. And then I'm going to hit send. So I get a screen that says, thank you, Matthew Campagna. Your message has been sent. Click here to continue. And when I do that, it takes me back to the image gallery. So you don't really leave the site. And now if I jump over to my email and I refresh my inbox, there is the email that I received from my client proofing gallery. So I've got lots of information here. One is the gallery title. Uh, this way I know where it came from. It shows the name of the client, the email address of the client, the telephone number if they gave you one, and also the website and comments. If I hit the reply, you can see that it actually fills in the email address of the client so that you can reply directly to them using your built-in email functions. So that's pretty cool. But what's really cool is the very first line where it says image. And then it gives you a comma separated list of file names. So I'm going to copy that list, go back to Lightroom, and get into my grid view. Then I'm going to use the library filter to bring down a text filter. And I'm going to set this to any searchable field, contains, and then I'm going to paste in that file name list. And when I do that, it instantly isolates the images that were selected by my client. And I can then save those images as a collection. Client selects or whatever you want to call it if you have a specific client name you want to use. And now you can go ahead and access those images that they selected anytime uh, for further processing, printing, or delivery. So that's the power of the client proofing gallery. It makes things very easy. It's very cool.